Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has been denied a debate appearance and is struggling to get supporters to dig in deep for donations. Despite recent pitfalls, though, he's still battling to get his name on ballots across the country. CBS News has confirmed so far he's only done so in six states. And now, a new report from Vanity Fair is leveling a range of new allegations about his conduct. The author of that article, Joe Hagan, joins us now. He's a special correspondent for Vanity Fair. Joe, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, really stunning reporting here. I want to talk about this sexual assault allegation against RFK Jr., which he did not deny when asked about it today. Tell us about how, you know, what you are learning about this, what you found. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I began this reporting about two months ago, and uh, I started to hear, you know, whispers of this kind of thing and uh, reached this woman who had been through a long process of trying to decide whether she wanted to come forward. As you can imagine, uh, it requires a lot of um, guts to to come on the record and, and uh, talk about things like this in public against a figure like uh, Bobby Kennedy, who's a powerful man from a powerful family. Um, and today, as you as you just pointed out, uh, those allegations came out. She was a babysitter for him in, in 1999, 1998. Um, and he uh, made some advances on her, unwanted advances on her, groped her, she says. She recorded some of this in her, a diary that was concurrent with the Times. Now, he was asked about it point blank today, and he said he had no comment on it, and also made some other comments that uh, you know, uh, he's no church boy, and what he did in his youth, uh, you know, was he's got skeletons in his closet, he said. Uh, well, he was 45 at the time of these allegations, which sort of post, post youth, as far as I can tell. But uh, so he's not said anything about him. Uh, he hasn't expanded on it. He hasn't rebutted it. Yeah, uh, not a denial there in the least. Um, I'm curious, too, in your reporting, I mean, how much— does the, can uh, the Kennedy family know about this candidate's conduct? I mean, it was striking, obviously, earlier this year. Lots of members mm -hmm. of the Kennedy family made a point to endorse Joe Biden. Um, but what yeah. have you found? Well, the family is well aware of uh, a history that has also been reported elsewhere, and which I record in my piece, uh, that he, you know, had various affairs over the years that uh, during the time he was married to his second wife, and, um, you know, some of his purported diaries leaked out into the press a few years ago. And, uh, you know, they're aware of it. They're aware of a lot of his um, behaviors um, and pathologies in which some of them were described to me by family members. Um, but there's a, a really interesting quote in my piece where I asked somebody very close to the family. I said, why won't the family be more public about what they know about him? And uh, the answer was that you know, if you start to unravel the problems with uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr., you may unravel the whole family tapestry. And so, you know, the mythology of the Kennedys is still a thing that they protect, uh, you know, very strongly. And uh, that's why it's so painful for them to have to uh, criticize him publicly in, in the ways they do. Um, yeah, that, that, that's fascinating, Joe. I mean, I, th I think a lot of people also obviously knew him for his name and also have known him for a while for promoting these, you know, anti-vaccine claims. I'm curious what you found the impact of that has been. Well, that was, um, you know, concurrently with a lot of the things I'm writing about, including the assault allegation, um, he went through a period of um, slowly breaking away from the environmental movement that he had made his name mm. uh, on. He was the face of some very, very, you know, a progressive climate uh, focused uh, groups like River Keepers and uh, NRDC, the National Resource Defense Council. And as he began to make these claims, they began to step away from him because these were, you know, uh, not science based claims and they were a science based organizations. And by 2014, mm -hmm. he'd, he'd broken with. Uh, a couple of these groups. And after he met with Trump in 2006, 17, uh, Riverkeeper stepped away from his as well. And that sort of mm. is a breaking point. And uh, ever since then, he's embraced the anti-vax movement as his primary uh, sort of crusade. Right. Well, Joe Hagan, thank you so much for your time and reporting. We encourage everybody to read your piece out in Vanity Fair. We appreciate your time. Thank you.